since this is a, a long play, I'm actually going to try and show you everything. And uh, the first thing is going to be the menu when I hit escape button. We've got the, the regular stuff. First of all, I guess you'll notice the music has stopped. Uh, but we've got a volume control here. I've turned it down a little bit. Hopefully it's not drowning out my voice. I may have to tweak things as the, as the long play goes on. We've got sound all the way up and the sound is on. And then there's this here that's new missions and classic missions. X-Wing CD-ROM is, I guess it's, it's actually technically a remake because the missions from X-Wing have been put into the TIE Fighter engine, which are just a modified version of the X-Wing engine. But the new missions uh, change a few of the er, the original missions in the disc version, make them a tad easier. Transitions shown or skipped, and this just is when you go between areas, and you'll see that really quick. Um, or very soon, pardon me. And then spoken text shown or not. So subtitles. Subtitles are on. Transitions are on. If they're off, it makes things quicker. But there's, there's my music. And uh, if I try and... You must register. You must register. Let's register. There we go. Fleos, flight cadet. Tour of duty score zero. And if we check out the log, there's that iMuse again. We haven't done anything. Nothing yet, but very soon, stuff will be happening. And, of course, gotta check out our merits. Nothing yet, but we are a flight cadet. Pretty good, and we have a medals case. This is not going to be filled for a very long time. This is stuff that was added in the um, add-on discs, Tour Duties 4 and 5. The fourth one, I believe, is called Imperial for Pursuit, and the fifth one was called B-Wing. Anyway, we registered. The dude will let us go. We can enter you the spaceport. Proceed. You may proceed. We have lots of options. Pilot pro Proving Ground. Historical Combat. And the music actually changes if you listen. Boarding, gate two. Add in the horn. Boarding, gate two. Anyway, but we are going to out, check out the tech room first of all. And then the film room. Tech room. Allows you to look at the schematics of certain craft. The engines of the X-Wing. Sensor package. It's kind of cool. Once again, the sequel is a little bit cooler. But there we are. And not every single craft is shown in such detail. But most of the small ones. That one's kind of cool, though. I like how the landing gear come out when you do that and so once again it's a long play I'm gonna go through the whole thing Y-wing we've got our laser cannons ion cannons which are very fun I don't know where they they came up with the idea of using ion cannons because that was not in the movie and it's been a long time since I've read the Timothy Zahn novels maybe they were part of that maybe it was an innovation that became canonical thanks to this game. I don't know. But the idea of the, the Y-Wings as the bombers is, is is certainly nothing new. And once again, the landing gear, whoop, popping up. A-Wing, great little ship, lots of fun. And in it, we can, we can see everything that it has to offer, including those concussion missiles. Very, very good. And a hyperdrive. The nice thing about the Rebel Alliance is that all of their vehicles have hyperdrives, so you can always escape. Not the case when you're the Empire. Those poor Imperials. And look at those. Look at those 400 KTU engines and of course the b-wing an add-on ship not originally included in the first release but still um lots of stuff so this is basically a y-wing on steroids 
a pretty great ship. There's a reason that you don't get to use it until the end. It's it's a little overpowered, much like the TIE Defender. I'm going to keep referring to TIE Fighter, and that might be a little annoying. For that, I apologize. But I, I played a lot more TIE Fighter than I did X-Wing, so... this Part of this is just to get me to finally play through this game. I don't know if it'll work or not. But we'll see. And since it's a long play, yeah, you'll be seeing everything. Oh, I, I went through, went through it all. Oops. And now we're onto the enemy craft. The tie interceptors start with those little tiny twin ion engines, which of course gives the tie its name. And the the laser cannons you see it's single fire or fire late. There are four of them. Those things are pretty dangerous. They're going to be the things that we need to be most afraid of in the beginning of the game. Um, after a while, things get there. There are more difficult ships but the tie interceptor is definitely not one that you want to go head to head with even in an x-wing tie fighters though i mean we can take them out pretty quickly and the empire not only refuses to give their ties hyperdrives in general they also don't generally give them shields and the tie is so simple, we've already gone through the whole thing. Look at that. So quick. Tie Bomber. This one's neat because it's somewhat asymmetrical. I've always liked that about the Tie Bomber. And oddly enough, according to this, the engines are only on the driver's side. There are no engines on this side. Which... I, I, I guess pilot side, not driver's side. This is not a car. The whole other side is for the concussion missile launchers. Also interesting to note, the laser cannons, it says, are there in the middle, but in reality, they're elsewhere. We've got concussion missile launchers and torpedo launchers. TIE bombers are dangerous. But not as dangerous as the assault gunboat, because the assault gunboat not only has missiles and laser cannons, and ion cannons, but it also well, has engines. That's that's not so scary. Um, it also has deflector shields, and there you go. So you gotta watch out, watch out for those. Finally, we got the bigger ships. Mon Calamari cruiser. Oops, did not mean to do that. Just some information about those, and these ones we don't get to see any of the schematics. The Nebulon B. Escort frigate? The Corellian Corvette. AKA the Blockade Runner. The Space Container. Big deal in this game. The Bulk Freighter. Which we'll be seeing a lot of. And an Imperial Class Star Destroyer. Always a scary sight. Oh, and I can't forget the Stormtrooper Transport. Of course not. The Delta Class DX-9, and also the other transport, the Lambda, aka the Imperial Shuttle, and the unsung hero of space, the Space Tug. That's it. That's it. We've gone through everything, which means it's time to check out the other room, that flight room. Here we go, or the film room, pardon me. The film room... And this is a really cool game, and it's a feature that continues in um, X-Wing. You were able to record your missions. So I put together a little tiny film just to show off, or recorded a little bit of my flight to show off what this is, what, what this can do. So I'll load the film. And uh, here we are. Here we are in space. This is my X-Wing in this mission. This is from mission three of the first tour of duty. And right now the camera is following me. If I don't want to be following, I can hit the F button. It becomes free moving and I can accelerate using button one on my joystick or button one on my mouse and I can go backwards using button two. And in case I ever get lost, I can just hit T to track and I can find a a, a new one. Right now we're, we're tracking X-Wing. Whoa! Red one. Oops, pardon me. 
Uh, I don't want to track. I want camera position. C. That switches my camera so I can see all of the different uh, things that are here. Even though you notice in the flight or in the, the information, the schematics, they were called Imperial shuttles. These are definitely rebel shuttles here. In this mission, we're trying to escape. And there's a very dramatic entry of a Star Destroyer. But it's hard to see from where you are in the mission. Which is one of the reasons that I, I put this together. So we have the Krillin Corvette. There we go. So here's the Krillin Corvette that we're going to get the view of. And when I'm ready to go, I just hit that play button. And the music continues. And it looks like it's not going anywhere. But I think it's actually moving. And suddenly, out of nowhere, a Star Destroyer. Oh, that was totally the wrong one. That's the problem. So let's look at that from a, another angle. So this is, this is what I saw, more or less. Uh, so I'll put it in follow mode. When I saw this footage, gotta rewind it. There we go. Ooh, there's something going on with my. Uh... There we go. Oh, that's gonna be horrible. What in the world is going on? I, I promise this worked a lot better when I first did it. And if you want the, the cool thing, I guess, is if you want to see more than one thing at once, you can track other objects, and it'll keep it as a chase camera. And, and that, that was that was it. So, <laughs> yikes! I'm gonna just check that out one more time and see if I can not have it be so gross. This is actually what you're supposed to see. So. From this perspective, and we'll see it pretty quick here. In comes the Star Destroyer. Oh, it appears to have become cor corrupted. That's not what we were supposed to see. But, I mean, you get the general idea of what this was supposed to be about. So that's the intro. With that, it's about time... To get our wings, get ready to fly with the pilot, proving ground. But that'll, that'll be in the Shuttle next video. Departing. Shuttle departing, indeed. Let's get out of here. And then we arrive at the hidden rebel training facilities to start our first test.